How's it going everyone? In today's video we're going to be learning about 8 useful Dunder methods that can be used with containers or collection types in Python. First of all, suppose you have a custom class that you will use with lists. And in this example we will not inherit from list, we will just implement all the Dunder methods ourselves. For example we can have something called custom list and here we'll create an initializer with only one argument, which will be a collection of type list. Then inside here, we're going to type in self dot underscore collection because we want to mark this as for internal use only. But note that this is merely a naming convention. So if anyone uses this outside of the class, there's a chance our class might bug out, but they should know that based on the underscore. Then we're also going to create something called underscore index, which will be set to zero. And I'll explain why we did this later. But for now, what's important is that we have some sort of collection, which in this case is going to be a list that we can use and manipulate inside this custom list class. And just for convenience, I'm going to create a Dunder string method, which returns the string of self dot underscore collection. So we get a nice output. Now, just to make sure everything's running correctly, we're going to create our if name is equal to main check and create some sort of sample list. And here we're just going to call it C, which will be an abbreviation for collection. Obviously give everything you create in Python a meaningful name. Just to keep it short and simple for this video, I'm going to name it C, which will be of type custom list. And the custom list will contain one, two, three, four, and five. Now, when we print C, what we're going to get as an output is our list. And that is the string representation. Without the string representation, we're going to get the regular representation. And this doesn't really help us in this situation. So we're just going to make sure we define a Dunder string method so that we can read the data. Anyway, let's get started with our first Dunder method, which is the iter Dunder method. To use it or to create it, we need to use Dunder iter. And that takes self as the first parameter and returns to us an iterator. And that's something you need to import. And you can either import that from typing or from collections.abc. Both of these are the same. Although the docs recommend you use this because apparently typing is slowly becoming deprecated. So forget what I said, let's follow the docs and use collections.abc. Now inside here, we need to return an iterator. And the easiest way to do that is to return iter and self dot underscore collection. This Dunder method allows us to create an iterator and is also what gets used when we initiate a for loop. So right now, if we're to type in for element in C, and you know what, we're just going to call you custom list. So for element in custom list, print element. So this becomes an iterator, which we can now loop through. And when we run it, we'll end up with this as an output, one, two, three, four, and five. What's cool about this is that you can return any iterator. It doesn't have to be a regular iterator. You can even type in enumerate, and this counts as an iterator, which means that now if we were to loop through our custom list, we would get the enumeration back for each one of them. And that's quite cool because you can define your own custom behavior for the for loop or for when you return an iterator. Although I strongly encourage you to make this clear to whoever is using this, because if I were to loop through a custom list, and I were to get the enumeration back, I would be quite confused. So this isn't something I particularly recommend. I just want to show you that you can do it because it works with any iterator. Moving on to Dunder method number two, get item. And that takes self as the first parameter and index as the second. And this is going to return to us any, which we can import from typing. By going back down, let's return self dot underscore collection at the index of index. And what this does is allow us to define functionality for when we're trying to retrieve an element via its index. Or if you're using this on a dictionary, this actually becomes a key. But in this example, since we're using a list here, it's going to refer to the index. And with this being defined, we can now type in print custom list, or we already have that up there, at the index of two. And that's going to return to us three because three is at the index of two. And I hope it's clear that you can add whatever functionality you want inside here. It doesn't have to be the default list functionality. You can also print something or do some sort of calculation before you get that element. For example, here we can type in getting element at the index of index. 
And now when we run this, we're going to get that message before we access the element. And something else I want to mention real quick is that you are not required to specify what type you're returning in Dunder methods. Sometimes it's going to be impractical to do so. In most cases, I like to do it because it gives me the syntax highlighting when I'm programming. For example, with our iterator, if we were to return something such as the collection itself, which is a list, we would get this syntax highlighting that we returned a list and not an iterator. And I find that kind of information very useful, especially when I want to return an iterator. So really it's up to you whether you want to specify this or not, but for this video, I'm going to do it on all of them. Moving on to Dunder method number three, set item. And once again, it will take self as the first parameter, then an index of type integer, and an item of type any. And this will return none because this is an operation that changes an item. So what we're going to do here is type in self dot underscore collection at the index of index and what we want the new value to be. And with that syntax, we can now type in custom list at the index of two should now equal 999. And then we should print it. So we can see the changes. And here I wrote is equals to not equal so let's fix that and run our program. And what you'll notice is that we changed whatever was at the index of two to 999. Up next, we have done the method number four, delete item. And this one takes self and the index, which will be of type integer. And once again, since this is something that executes code and doesn't return anything, we're going to specify none as a return type. And then we can type in delete self dot underscore collection at the index of index. Now, when we go down, we can delete custom list at the index of two. And I want the small custom list. And now when we run that, you should notice that 999 will no longer be there because we deleted it. Okay, this is starting to look like a lot of code. So I'm going to remove that for the next examples. And up next, we're going to create what's called contains. And this allows us to perform membership checks so here we'll add self and item, the item to check for, which will return a Boolean. And now we can return whether an item is in the self dot underscore collection. Now to use this, all we have to do is print two in custom collection or try with something else like 10 in custom collection. And it's either going to return true or false based on whether two or 10 is inside the custom list. Moving on to Dunder method number six, reversed. And this one confuses a lot of beginners. And I'm not talking about the Dunder method itself, but just the reversed function, because it is a built-in that we have in Python. What a lot of beginners don't know is that this returns an iterator. It does not return the original type. So here we're going to return reversed with self dot underscore collection. And now if we were to print reversed and pass in our custom list, what we're going to get as an output is that our list was reversed or turned into a reversed iterator object. And in general, the reversed function does this for literally every type you try to reverse. So even if it's just a regular list, you're still going to end up with a reversed object. So here you can define the functionality that you want for reversed. Maybe you want to do something before you reverse it. Maybe you want to remove some elements, add some elements or add your own filter options. You can do all of that inside here. Up next, we have done the method number seven, next. So here we'll type in next, and all that does is take self and return any, or in this case, it will return any, because it really depends on the type we insert into our custom list. Now here we can finally refer to our index. So we can type in self dot underscore index is greater than or equal to the length of self dot underscore collection. That's going to mean that we're out of bounds and that we want to raise a stop iteration error. Otherwise, we're going to grab the value, which will be of type any, and type in self dot underscore collection and grab the value at the current index. Then we should do self underscore index plus equals one and return the value. What we did here is define the functionality for our iterator, what it should do each time we try to grab the next value, which means now we can print next and pass in our custom list. And each time we grab the next value, it's going to return to us what's next. So now we have the functionality that allows us to use our custom list as a generator. 
and self dot underscore index is keeping track of the current state of this iterator. Here we only have five numbers, which means that once we grab everything, we're going to have nothing left to iterate through. So if we were to do this one more time, we'd run into a stop iteration error. And finally, let's move on to Dunder method number eight. And this one is called length hint. Why can't I spell? What is wrong with me? Length hint. And that returns to us an integer. And what this does is return the number of elements left to iterate through, which is also useful for optimizations and internal operations in Python. And here what we're going to do is return the length of self dot underscore collection minus self dot underscore index. So we get an idea of how many elements we have left to iterate through when we're using our custom list as an iterator. And unlike the other Dunder methods, here we're required to use a special import to actually see this. And this import comes from the operator module. So here we can type in operator and import the length hint. Now, if you hover over length hint, you'll see a much better description than the one I gave you. What it does is return an estimate of the number of items in an object. And this is useful for pre-sizing containers when building from an iterable. If the object supports length, the result will be exact. Otherwise, it may over or underestimate by an arbitrary amount. The result will be an integer that's greater than or equal to zero. So it's important to note that it's not always going to be perfectly precise, but it still gives us back a very useful estimate. And to see how it works, we can continue with this. We can type in print next custom list, and then we can print remaining and pass in length hint, which is the function we imported, followed by the object, which is our custom list. Now, when we run this, we should have three remaining because we use two, which means we have three more elements that we can call next on. Then we can call it maybe two more times and use it once again right after that. And what we should end up with is that we have one more element remaining. And it's very important to note that if you define both length and length hint in your custom class like this, so for example, we can type in length, of course that takes self and returns an integer. And then we return the length of our self dot underscore collection that every time we call length hint, it's always going to use our length dunder method. So that's just something you should be aware of when you are using both of them. Anyway, that just about covers everything I wanted to talk about in today's video. Do let me know in the comment section down below whether you have any other questions or whether you have any information you would like to share regarding these Dunder methods. But otherwise, with all that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.